that magic, okay? okay. He gonna get your music? Is that where he's going? <laughs> Y'all know? Okay. Well, let's let's do this thing. Let's uh I want the young people to come sing in just a minute, Brother Philip, I thanks to get running the music down. So uh let's uh you Overton girls come sing for us.
you to think of the story just a second that the song tells. Think of the story. Think about what happened. Think about the woman that was caught in adultery. She never denied that she was an adulterer. She never denied that she was not a sinner. She was a sinner. She never did come and say, I'm, I, was, I was wrongly accused. But all she come was looking for mercy. And she come to the right one to find it. Amen. Amen. Listen, there was a day when I, I, I was, all I was in need of was, was mercy. I knew I was a sinner. I knew I was at fault. I knew I had wrong. I still know today. But I'm getting to live the life I live because of the justification I have through Jesus Christ. That his, his righteousness has been imputed unto me. I'm not living here today because I'm worthy of it. I'm not in this place because I'm worthy of it. But I'm here because he's worthy. Amen. Amen. And I can be justified, and I have been justified through the precious blood of the Son of God. She came that way that day an adulterer, but she left that way that day free of every sin that she had ever had, of the adultery of everything. Let me tell you, there's nothing too big in your life that God can't reach right in, clean up, and take away. But you just got to come to the place where you realize that I'm guilty. I'm guilty, but there's somebody that paid that debt for me. There's somebody that took my place. There's somebody that went to Calvary on my behalf. He shed his precious blood and today I don't care how vile you are. I don't care how wicked you are. I don't care how desperate you are. There's no depth too deep that the love of God can't reach. He can reach you exactly where you are today and you'll be justified. Maybe you say, preacher, I'm saved. I've been living in a far country. Well, let me tell you, honey, that's same blood that brought you uh, to Calvary uh, can bring you back there. It can bring you back 
to the place where that you can get rid, get forgiveness of your sin. Because you see, when that, that blood was shed, it just wasn't shed for those sins that, that you once committed, but it was shed for those that you would commit. And that, that, that sin was paid for under the precious blood of, the, of Calvary's cross. You can get redemption today. And you can walk away with freedom. Y'all sing it. That last verse again. I don't care. You sing the whole thing again. I don't care. Uh, I ain't no hurry. If you're in a hurry, you can dismiss when you want to.
to come up here. Please, four or five of you, you older ones, come on. We tried to do something to recognize the fathers. Most daddies have about everything, right? Uh, but all them is the same color. Most daddies have about everything, so I mean, y'all like to drink coffee. Amen. All right. Well, we've got some mugs that the church is going to give to the daddies. It's got the church symbol with the name of the church on them. These girls, y'all get y'all a few of them and, and go to handing them out. First of all, before we let's give them all the daddies, okay? Uh, first, and we'll see how many we got left. And, and we'll make it around to as many as we can. Get you a handful of them and take them and go distribute them. If you want to, maybe you want to get one. That Miss Angela wants one. She wants to give her daddy hers herself. So, uh, and uh, so. Just more than go with them, girl. We got folks all over here too, man. So.
All right. All right. Let's turn in our Bibles this morning. It's been good, good service thus far. Good spirit, good singing. I appreciate the good singing, good spirit in which we were able to enjoy. Turn to the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 2 this morning. 1 Samuel chapter number 2. And we're going to begin to read with verse number 27. 1 Samuel chapter number 2. And beginning to read with verse number 27. We are on the... We know what today is. Today is the day in which we honor our fathers. And, and uh, we were at camp this week. And uh, we got in there Monday night, Brother Dean, and we separate the boys and the girls when we get there. We even separate husbands and wives when we get there, okay? Uh, we have had the girls sitting on this side and the boys on this side. And uh, when we walked in there, when we first first day we, we set up there, I began to look and we had about 40 girls on this side and we had 11 boys. That's what we had. And I got to thinking about it. Me and Brother Jacob started talking about it and he said, you know what preacher? He said, that's a reflection of the church. And it really is when you think about it. Men see no need today anymore for things about things of God. They don't see any need today to to be in the house of God or to be raised their family, to be with their family. And so we're seeing it being reflected in every area when it comes to the to the males. That it, what we find is that men are more or less laying down on God and laying down on the things of God it's going to come to haunt us real bad here for long if it's not already it's going to really be a bad thing if we don't if we don't turn, make a turn about and have a revival in our great land so 2 Samuel chapter number 2 if you find your place and you can't enable I invite you to stand in honor the reading of the word of God and I want to read beginning with verse number 27. 2 Samuel chapter 2 and verse number 27. We know that uh, Samuel has, uh, is, uh, has been given to, uh, to Hannah. She's given him back to God and she's been taken to, to the house of God and Eli's been left in charge of him. And... Uh, and Samuel's childhood, he ministered before the Lord being a child. And, and uh, everything that Samuel did was such a, a blessing. And, but it came about because he had a mama we know of that dedicated him unto God. And tonight when you come back, we're going to be looking at more about, about dedication. 
in our, in our study on the home that we're going through. Uh, but we'll notice this, that, that, uh, that in the Word of God, that, that Eli had gotten old. And uh, that Eli had, uh, had allowed some things to take place in his home. He allowed some things to go un, un, undone and undealt with. He did, just did not deal with them. I don't know if he got so busy with church things that he forgot the home front. And let me tell you, that does happen. And it happens quite a bit and quite often. Boy, let me tell you, I try to tell my young preachers right here every time, your first ministry is not your church. Your first ministry is your home. Your first obligation is not your church. Your first obligation is your home. Now I know that's not popular preaching in the day that we live because uh, it, when preaching became more of an occupation than it did a ministry, that's when you start feeling a lot of, seeing a lot of folk fall off and fall by the wayside and just uh, making sure that you can build big numbers. But let me tell you what, what church is supposed to be made of. It's supposed to be made of families. Supposed to be made of homes. That's what he's supposed to be made of. So let me get to the point and get to the reading of the word of God. And there came a man of God unto Eli and said unto him, verse 27, Thus saith the Lord, Did I plainly appear unto the house of thy father when they were in Egypt in Pharaoh's house? And did I choose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to offer upon mine altar, and to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me? And did I give unto the house of thy father all the offerings made by fire of the children of Israel? Wherefore kick ye at my sacrifices and at my offering, which I have commanded in my habitation, and honorest thy son above me. Think about that now. To make yourselves fat with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people. Wherefore the Lord God of Israel saith indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord, is say, the Lord saith, be it far from me. For them that honor me, will I, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and, thine, and, and the arm of thy father's house, that there shall not be an old man in thine house. And thou shalt, not, and thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation in all that, uh, the wealth which God shall give Israel. And there shall not be an old man in the house forever. And the man of thine, uh, whom I shall cut, not cut off from mine altar, shall be to consume thine eyes and to grieve thine heart and all the increase of thine house shall die in the flower of their age and this shall be a sign unto thee that shall come upon thy two sons upon Hophni and Phinehas that one day they shall die both of them and I will raise me up a faithful priest that shall do according to, to that which is, uh, which is in my heart uh, and in my mind and I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before mine anointing forever and it shall come to pass that every one that is left in thine house shall come and crouch to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread and shall say put me I pray thee into one of the priest offices that I may eat of a piece of bread heavenly father thank you for the privilege to read your word this morning and I thank you God for the chance to stand one more time and God I, I stand feeble as I've ever been, ever been today and Lord God I'm in much need this morning I pray that you give me anointing and give me unction to preach what thus saith the word of God today. Lord God, I sure would be honored, God, if you just let me uh, preach like a dying man to a dying world one more time. Lord God, help me, Lord, that, that the Holy Ghost could unctionize the words that come from my mouth, not that I could be lifted up or glorified in any way. God, that Jesus could be magnified and exalted. And God, that something could change in our homes that might make a difference in our land. Oh God, help us, I pray. Help us not to drop the ball, I ask you. Forgive me of my failures and my sins. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. And you might be seen. I want to ask you, be, be seated. I want to ask you a question this morning. I want to ask you, did you know that the future of your family as a husband depends upon you? As a daddy, did you know that the future of your family depends upon you? I'm telling you today uh, that we've got the idea that we as 
daddies that our only obligation is uh, is to make sure our family has food on the table and bread and uh, and clothes on their back and a place of rest. But you know that's not according to what God said. What God said. Uh, what God lets us know that uh, that uh, when He give us a child that He entrusted in us and He placed in us uh, a responsibility uh, to do as Hannah did uh, unto uh, unto Samuel, and that is to give that child back to God and allow God to use that child uh, to the greatest of His ability. I guarantee you uh, that you ask uh, uh, Brother Brad and Sister Sandy this morning, uh, by, and and you ask Sister Wanda uh, this morning, you would find out that what they think uh, is that the, uh, probably uh, that the the time span in which that we have our children is a very short time. Uh, listen, I, I can tell you uh, that now that uh, my son has been gone uh, away from the house now for uh, pretty close going on 15 years now. My daughter's uh, over 10 years now, and it don't seem like it's been much over that that they've been born and, and brought into the world. So I, I'm telling you that, that the time that we have been entrusted and been given to influence our family is a very short time. And we must make the very best use of that time that God gives us. So the Bible tells us in, in, in Proverbs 22 and verse number 15 that, that foolishness is bound in the heart of a child and the rod, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. And that's the main thoughts that we want to think about when it comes to raising a, a children as a daddy. And I am saying this, that it is the daddy's responsibility uh, to uh, to uh, to uh, initiate or to influence in the discipline of, of the home. Any, any discipline that the mother does uh, is of the authority of the dad. And that's by the authority of God's word. Uh, so we can think what we want to about that. And most of the time, uh, me and my daughter was talking a few weeks ago and she said, Daddy, I can count on, on one hand how many times you whipped me. And she didn't need a whole lot. And, uh, and I said, well, I asked her this. I said, well, can you, can you, have you got enough appendages to count how many times mama got you? And she said, oh, no, daddy. There ain't enough ink and a pencil or a pen to tell you how many times mama got me. Well, that's because maybe I wasn't there. And mama would get them and, and, and would allow them to know that's all part of the training. But that's the, that was at the authority or a link of the authority of our home. That, that God made me and her one. So what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying when it comes to judgment, okay? When we come to judgment, I'm telling you what's going to happen is I'm going to give an account for how my children were raised. I'm going to give an account for how my children were brought up. I'm going to stand before God and give, God, give an account to God for, for everything that I've done in my home, the things that I've neglected. And let me tell you uh, right now that, that I, I got some sorrowful moments in my life as I went over this thing this morning in my study and I sat in there, I began to think and have so many regrets and have so much uh, uh, so many things in my life that, that the Lord brought to my attention that let me know that, that boy I, I failed in some areas of my of my home. Now God blessed in spite of me uh, so many times and, and God blessed in spite of who I was uh, uh, so many times but, but listen I think about if I'd have just stood up to the test uh, and done what God wanted me to do majority of the time how much better could things have been? I'm going to tell you, I want to preach to you on the subject this morning of what happens when daddy drops the ball. What happens when daddy drops the ball. When you think about the scripture that we've read this morning, we find that Eli, that he was, uh, that, that he was uh, uh, the, the high priest, or he was the priest in the land. It was an inherited position that was inherited. As we read, we can find down from one generation to another. It was a, a lineage thing, and, and that, that they had a great responsibility. They lived off of the offerings of the people of Israel. Most of the time, those men sought God and, and got and was desirous to be pleasing unto the Lord because that they had to give an account unto God for their actions and everything. But I think about Eli and the situation here. And if you read the story, we'll find that Eli, that what happened, that, that, that his, his sons had no concern for God. They were stealing from the people of Israel. And not only were they stealing, they were laying with the woman, at the, with women at the gates of the temple. They were studying and committing fornication 
fornication and adultery uh, there in, at, the, at the very house of God. And look, they had no regrets. They were just, uh, uh, had the men. And the Bible said they had the men of Israel where they didn't even want to go down and offer sacrifices uh, unto God down there. In other words, there were some things that Eli had done. He might have been a good priest uh, unto most of Israel, but he neglected what was needful at home. And number one, that is the first thought I want to talk about this morning is the neglect uh, in the home. We, fee- we see uh, that undoubtedly there was no spiritual influence in the home of Eli. Uh, many uh, today, what's happening around the world today, many are being left to themselves. Uh, I was listening at a, at a debate going on here recently and it was talking about uh, young black uh, families in, in, uh, in America and, and I, I began to th- listen to them as they said, so, th- this lady, lady Candace Owens, y'all heard of her, I'm sure, uh, that, that she's a black conservative woman and, and she's smart as a whip, but she was debating some other black people and she said that 78% of the home of the, the black homes in America are single mother homes. Well, 78%, that just means that, that most of them, according to, to, to maybe the lifestyle that they live or something like that, was most of them uh, may not have ever had a, a, a husband to start with. Or, and if they did, they couldn't stay together. They, they've termed, they, they, they've uh, uh, concocted the phrase and the term, not just among black folk, uh, because I, I'm telling you that uh, this term has been concocted and come up with a baby mama or baby daddy and, and all that kind of foolishness. Now, never hear nothing about a husband and a wife anymore and a mama and daddy anymore. Hey, brother, God God started a family and he didn't call it a baby mama and a baby daddy. What God started was a home, was a daddy and a mama, was a husband and a wife and, and that's what it ought to still be. But when you, What's happened not only in the black neighborhood but in the white homes also, in the homes of the black churches, you may have a daddy there and you may have a mama there but there's a mama that loves God most of the time and daddy loves God when it's convenient. Uh, what you find a lot of times is a mama uh, that sets her, her, her heart on raising the children and daddy uh, could care less. All he wants to do is meet the, uh, the concerns of his, uh, of his flesh. Let me tell you something friend. Uh, uh, what there's going to be is a reckoning day. There's going to be a day when we're going to reap what we've sown. Uh, there's going to come a time when you're going to stand before God and you're going to give an account. But before that day happens there's going to be a day uh, when your heart strings will be pulled on because be not deceived God is not mocked for whatsoever man soweth that shall he also reap we find today that there's no structure in the home sometimes it's amazing how we see the sin of others but we fail to see our own sin that's what was happening with Eli Eli would have never allowed Israel to go unpunished maybe for the sins of adultery but he didn't but he closed his eyes to the sins of his family Closed his eyes. Let's see the problems that exist. We see neglect in the home. Not only we see neglect in the home when dads drop the ball, we see neglect in the heart when dads drop the ball. It seems to me that Eli invested more into the ministry than he did into his family. Did I tell you that, Brother Philip, when you left to go preach off? Boy, your first, your first ministry, your first ministry sits on the pew with you. Amen. Your first ministry is one that you feed every day. Right. Let me tell you something. You can get so caught up in your jobs. Yes, you can get so caught up in your, your fun that you'll neglect your family. You, you can get so caught up in everything there is around, Daddy. Let me tell you something. I'd hate to know that I raised a family that God blessed me with and God gave me a, a good children that, and that, that want some structure in their life. Uh, somebody told me about somebody the other day said so they're begging to go to church uh, but their mama and daddy don't care about going to church. God help a mama and God help a daddy uh, that won't carry their children down to the house of God. Oh, let me tell you something, Daddy. You're going to be a accountable to a holy God one of these days. Uh, you're going to stand before him and give an account. Uh, uh, why, uh, why, did you, why were you too busy to be faithful to the house of God? Why were, you, why were you too busy? What is more important? Well, it's not that you can buy them a, a new truck. You know what? You know what's scary? 
It may be that there may be some that's been already lost. That it's too late. I'm not meaning for the prayers of God can't reach them. But there's been so much hypocrisy in the home. That they say they must not be too much to this religion thing. There must not be too much to this salvation thing. Because there's so much hypocrisy. You know what we wait to do? What most of us do? Will you listen to me? We wait till there's a problem that rises up before we begin to correct it. Amen. Amen. We wait till the problem arises and we'll say, I better run down to the church then. Amen. We'll wait till the problem comes up. Listen to me. You know how to keep you from, from, from having, uh, uh, and God help us, I'm just going to pr preach it straight. You know, you, I mean, you know how to keep, heaven, keep from raising sodomites? <laughs> You ought to bring them up in the house of God and get them born again. Amen. You bring them up in church and expose them and present and, and let them have, hear the preaching and let them, uh, let them get born again. Let them get under conviction. Listen, I see so many mamas and daddies today. I preached right here in this place before several years ago, a lot longer than most of you have been here. Uh, but, but I preached right here and watched a grandma intervene for her granddaughter under conviction and say, you know, you know that you got saved way back here and that girl looked me in the eyes and say, I'm lost, I'm lost, I'm lost. But grandma talked her into being saved. You ought to let, you ought to let God have his way. You ought to let God be the one to do the convicting. You ought to let God be the one that has the, has the control over that. Oh no, it's not my business, it's God's business. It's not your business, it's God's business. And what we need to do is, uh, is we need to get concerned about the souls of our family. Uh, we neglected not only our home, but we're neglecting the heart. Uh, well, did, did Eli, what did he do? Did he get as concerned about his sons uh, uh, as, uh, as he was about the souls of others? I don't know. Don't seem to me like he cared very much. He made a statement over toward the end of, or the middle of chapter number two. He, he, he went to them and told them and, and he said, I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. And, and, uh, and he told them what, the, uh, they, the, the, what he thought about it. And the Bible said they, they didn't hearken unto him. They didn't pay him any attention. You know why? Because maybe they said, Daddy don't really care. Daddy don't really care. Verse 22. Bible said in chapter 2, the Bible said right there, and Eli was very old and heard all that his sons had done unto all Israel and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregations. And here's what he said. He said unto them, Why do ye such things? For I hear of your evil dealings by all this people. He said, Nay, my sons, for it is no good report that I hear Ye make the Lord's people to transgress. But look in the middle of chapter number, verse number 25. Notwithstanding, they hearken not unto the voice of their father. Notwithstanding, they hearken not to the voice of their father. You know, you can wait too late to try to fix the problem. You can get down, you can get in your car and vehicle and begin to go down the road here. And by the time you get to Poplarville, you say you see the needle on your car is running hot. And you say, I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stop when I get to Wiggins and fix this thing. You're going to stop before you get to Wiggins. But it's going to be too late to fix it. Because you've waited too late to address the problem. There's a lot of things in our life and our families that we can see that needs attention. But we wait to address the problem. Let me tell you, as long as you come to church here, I'm still going to preach against sodomites and, and I'm still going to preach against lesbianism and I'm still going to preach against adultery and I'm still going to preach against fornication. I can't, I can't help how, how much the times uh, uh, change and I can't help how much uh, uh, people uh, don't, uh, become acceptable of those sins. God's Word and my King James Bible uh, will never accept those sins uh, and God's people should never accept those 
those sins. They should always be against those sins. Now, the Bible said Eli was very old and he heard all that his sons did. Now, you can wait and you can wait and you can wait, but if their soul is important to you, if their future is important to you, if their reputation is important to you, you ought to stand up and be daddy today and say from this day forward we're going to change things. Amen. In my home, Joshua said that in the 24th chapter. He said, choose you this day whom you'll serve, whether it be the gods that your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the God of the Amorites in whose lands he dwelt. But he said, but as for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Is that what he said? Uh -uh. But he spoke for his children too. He spoke for his wife too. He said, we're going to serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know what you say, well, preacher, I can't speak for my family. That's why our families are in the condition that they're in. Because we have too many daddies that don't have the backbone enough to be daddy. God forgive me. I don't mean to make you mad. I'm not trying to be ugly to you. But I'm trying to tell you if, you, if you're concerned about your family, if you love your family, you ought to invest in them and invest in the heart of your children while they're young. You ought to invest in, what they, in what's going on in their life. You ought to invest in their spiritual well-being. That ought to be important to you. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 said this, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Uh, their, their heart are, is very important. The Bible tells us that thing's wicked, isn't it? The only way you can do is keep attention to it. Keep it, uh, keep it, your attention drawn to it. Uh, but look, I'm telling you today uh, that so many of us are, are neglecting our heart and neglecting the hearts of our children. We heard Brother Eric preach this week about the heart. Boy, he done a tremendous job there at camp when he preached about it. And boy, how effective it is. How it, how it directs us and, 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 and leads us. Uh, we, uh, we don't need to drop the ball with the hearts of our children. You know where most of us carry the hearts of our children? We carry the hearts of our children in the secular world. We carry, we'll tote them into a ball field. Amen. We'll tote the hearts of our children uh, into, into something this world has. And, we'll, and, and that becomes the big, the big G God in their life. In church and Jesus becomes the little G God in their life. Why? Because daddy and because daddy's responsibility to show up and, and show his children how to love God. Daddy's God has become ball or hunting or something like that. We ought to be sure and not neglect our hearts. Be careful where you place your heart. Be careful where you place the heart of your children, what you give the attention to your children, what you show the most attention to. And not only, number, not only do we neglect the heart, we drop the, when we drop the ball as a dad, we neglect the heritage. Neglect our heritage. I got to reading this, and when I come to a certain part, my heart dropped to my knees. When I was reading this this, this week, and, and I stopped and looked at this, and, and I got down to about verse 31 and 32, and I heard where the preacher, the man of God, you know, it don't really tell us who this man of God was, does it? But it just says a man of God came. And a man of God came to Eli, and, and he told him, and he said, did I plainly, God speaking, God said, did I plainly appear into the house of thy father in verse 27? And then he, go, he tells Eli all the things that he had, had inherited, but he got down to verse number 31. And, the, and, and he, God speaking to Eli said, Behold, the days come that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thy father's house, and there shall not be an old man in thine house. I said, oh my goodness. Listen to what he said in verse 32. And thou shalt see an enemy in my habitation and all the wealth which God shall give it, that I'll become your enemy. I'll be seen. You know what we see in America today? Anything of God has become the enemy of America today. 
the majority of American people today look at the, at the church, look at the Lord, uh, and, and, and they, they think we're their enemy. Why? Because we're not like they are. Because we don't stand for what they stand for. Because we don't do what they do. And we don't care for what they care for. It's, where, it's come to the place where people can no longer disagree and still be cordial. But if I don't agree with you, I become your enemy. And if you don't agree with me, I, you become my enemy. But that's, not, listen, God said here in his word, he said that, that and thou shalt see, in, uh, see an enemy in my habitation all the, uh, and all the wealth which God shall give Israel. And listen, and there shall not be an old man in thy house forever. The sins of our lives left neglected can result in a crop of an unspiritual lineage. I was reading this morning and uh, I was reading about, went over in Proverbs and, and I looked up where it talked about the, the, the crown of an old man, children's children are the crown of an old man. And uh, boy, that's the truth. I know I've been using that scripture a good bit lately. Uh, but children's children, you, you heard Brother Will's grandpa stand up a while ago and uh, and he bragged on Will. And Brother Brad done said Will's their favorite, right? He bragged on Will. You know why? Because children's children are a crown to an old man. <laughs> children's children are a crown to an old man. But what about it? What about this? He talked about how Will had started off a lot better than he had. There's a, there's, there's, a her, there's a lineage that's being laid down now. There's a heritage that's, been, that's being, being left. In other words, when God blesses them with children, then he can put forth the effort to make sure that, that his son knows Jesus, loves the Lord, serves him faithfully, is a good man, is a faithful, put the, put the effort, put the, uh, all the, the influence in them that they can stand. But what Eli heard, what Eli heard was they won't be an old man left in your lineage. I got a text message late last night from where my daddy is and, and they said that the, the, the boy, my daddy's, my daddy's stepson that he's staying with over there, he told him, said that, told me, said that dad is home with me. He's uh, in the, uh, in the, he sleeps a whole lot. Don't wake up a whole lot. Stays in bed pretty, pretty weak. Said they said that they want him on hospice, so they started him on hospice. That lets me know that probably not long. And I pray my daddy's saved. I hope he's born. I hope he is. I've asked him. I've talked to him. I hope he's saved. Boy, if I hadn't got, hadn't got intercepted by the Lord Jesus one day, if God hadn't come by my way, my son may have looked back and said, when, I, when I'm in, in my desk bed, if I have one, and say, I hope daddy's saved. I hope daddy's saved. But you see, I want to live my life in a way that, that when they pass, when they, when, when they look up where I'm at, that they say daddy's going to be with Jesus Amen. and I'll see him in a little while. You see, I, I want to I want to I want to be be as faithful to God as what I can in raising them because I want their children to be able to to come to their casket one day and look over in their casket and say, "I'll see Daddy in a little while." And when that next generation comes, go look in that casket and say, "I'll see Daddy in a little while." And now we may not always be we may not all have a good start, but brother, we can all have a good finishing point. And we ain't got a we may not start well all the time, but we can all finish well, brother Brad. And that's because God's uh, the ground's level at Calvary and the precious blood of the Lord Jesus paid for the sins uh, of all humanity. And God gave every man and God said he loved the world so much uh, that whosoever will can be saved. Uh, and I'm grateful today uh, that God didn't pick and choose like those Calvinist Amen. fellows say. I'm glad that God gave his son to die uh, that whoever desires to be saved uh, can be born again. And not only can they, friend, I want you to know uh, that God will 
keep them eternally secure when they put their faith in Jesus. Hey, Daddy, you've got too much to lose to drop the ball. Amen. Amen. That's right. Lord help us. You got too much to lose to drop the ball. Please don't drop the ball. Or Mark, don't drop it. You got, look at that. Look, look at that bench right there. Look down there. Brother Philip, look around this place. Brother Michael, look down that bench of yours there. You can't drop the ball, brother. Amen. You can't drop it because if you do, there's, there might be some generations cut off. You got too much to lose. Brother Brad, I know you know this. I thank God for the job you've done Amen. with your family. Amen. I appreciate you so good. I do. But you know you can still drop the ball. Don't do it. Amen. There's too much to lose. There's too much to lose. There's way, way, way too much to lose. We, we got, can you imagine, let me just ask you this. Can you imagine how it must have been for Eli that one day while he was sitting in his place that there ran a messenger through the door and they said, Eli, Eli, the enemy, they've stolen the ark of God. And thy sons, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead. Eli knew the condition of their soul. Eli knew how they stood. Eli knew. Eli knew. There's so much to lose. Proverbs 17 and 6. This was that scripture I was mentioning to you a while ago. Children's children are a crown of old men. And the glory of children are their fathers. That first part we liked, well, I like that. I like that. You say, preacher, why do you think I've got so much responsibility? Listen to this verse. Children's children are the crown of old men. But listen to what the children think about this. And the glory of children are their fathers. My daddy can beat up your daddy. You ever heard that? I'll spend a good, a good bit of time with Will. And I'm going to say this because Brother Brad's here. Brother Brad, you're his hero. You, your son's hero. I don't know if you know it, but I want you to know it now. He esteems you very highly. He sure does. And what did the Bible say? And the glory of children are their fathers. I've watched, I've watched Caitlin. I've known Caitlin since she was... And Caitlin's a loving little girl. Amen. But you'll watch her with her daddy. She loves her mama. But her daddy's her hero. Well, Michael, I watch your girls. In just a couple of years that I've been around y'all faithfully, I see how those girls think of their daddy. Amen. Boys, you listen to me. Why don't you listen to me? Connor, you listen to me. You listen good. You've got way more influence than what you signed up for. Amen. you got way more influence than what you know of. If you want to see your children in heaven... You better show them what happens about at home. Amen. Amen. Us older ones, 
Mine's grown and gone, but I can still drop the ball. I don't want to, Brother Brad. I want to hold, over, hold on to it tight until I cross the goal line. I want to hold on tight until I finish this race. Got too much to lose. Too much to give up. And that's not how I don't want to give it up. God gave me children. He gave me a love like I never knew. He did. I'm going to tell you, when I looked at that little old boy of mine, he looked at me with one eye. When the first time he, uh, I called him Popeye, that's the way he looked at me. When they first rolled him out there and brought him to me. God did something in my heart right then. I remember going up there to the door, to the window of that nursery, pressing my face against that glass of that nursery. Tears rolling down my face and said, I said, God, if you'll help me, God, I'll raise him for you. Well, I made a lot of mistakes. Made a lot of mistakes. When they handed me that little girl, they laid her in my arms. I hated every little boy in the world right then. I'm telling you, I did. I still don't like most of you. I'm just kidding. But I know this, it's going to take somebody special for me to give my little girl away to her. So what I do, I prayed for God to send, to send that special one. And He did. And He did. Folks, men, listen to me. You ought to want your children, Brother Mark. Mark, when this thing's all said and done, make sure that Amberly knows that Daddy loved God. Make sure that, that Kylie knew that, that Daddy loved the Lord. More than anything else. Beyond anything else, and I'm done, I want to leave a line of a legacy of my children, my grandchildren. And hey, I'm even now, I got a granddaughter who's 10 years old. It won't be just a few years and she'll be a marrying. I want great-grandchildren. Son, as good as grandchildren are, I don't know how in the world great-grandchildren are. I can't see them getting any better. But they tell me they can But I won't see great grandchildren. Brother Philip, hear him say, My great grandpa fought the good fight. He held on. He finished well. Huh. I'll tell you this as I sit here today, I'm very sorry that I've of all the things that I have failed my families. I've sure failed them. But I can start today and do sometimes I think, well, it's too late. You ever think that, Brother Dean? It's not. It's not too late. Because today is the first day of the rest of our lives. We can start today and make a difference, Brother Daniel. Not too late. So if you've been a failure thus far, why don't you decide today, I'm not failing anymore. I'm going to lead my family in the right way. Caitlin, come to the piano, please. I'm going to lead my family in the way of God, in the way everlasting. I'm going to be faithful to God. I'm going to try to gain and regain what I've lost. Preacher, my children, they're out in the world. Preacher, what can I do? i tell you what you can do. You can run as fast as you can back to the cross. Fall on your knees and beg God to help you get back in your life what you need and give you the influence of your children. 
back unto you. Why don't you do that today? Why don't you do that this morning? If you're hearing lost, oh, why don't you give your life to the Lord Jesus? Because he gave his for you. Why don't you come to him? Why don't you run to him? Why don't you give God what he wants? And that's your soul. May God bless you this morning. The altars are open. The invitation's open. Would you come to the Lord? Would you get your business fixed with God? While there's time, don't drop the ball, Daddy. Don't drop the ball. Won't you run them young'uns down here? Get on your face before God and give them to Him and promise them. Promise Him that you're going to serve Him all the days of your life. May God bless you.